Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'en arrive, si vous me permettez cette expression, au plat de résistance de la Commission d'études 7, puisqu'il s'agit de la révision de la recommandation UITR TF 460-6. Cette proposition de révision a été présentée à deux reprises à la commission d'études 7 sans qu'il soit possible de l'adopter. En conséquence, j'ai donc décidé de l'envoyer à l'Assemblée radio afin que celle-ci puisse prendre une décision. The use of leap seconds in the coordinated universal time, UTC, introduces discontinuities or disruptions into what would be an otherwise continuous time stream. It is our responsibility to make adjustments to accommodate modern requirements and modern technology. The revisions in this recommendation do that, Mr. Chairman, and we wish to express our appreciation to the Chairman Means and to all of the experts that have worked hard over the last 10 years to achieve this successful document that will bring coordinated universal time into a position that is sustainable and that is continuous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our document 48 contains 11 key points which, in the view of the UK, show that approval of the revision of this recommendation would be premature. One argument put forward for ending the insertion of the leap seconds in UTC is a concern over the increasing number of system timescales that do not implement leap seconds. And one example is GPS time. The UK government does not consider that the proliferation of these system timescales should be a concern as these system specific uh, scales the time can be converted before being made available to general users. Specifically, leap seconds have already been inserted without causing difficulty uh, to these systems. Canada does not see any compelling reason to change its definition. Notwithstanding, there are applications which would benefit from the definition and distribution of a true atomic time in parallel with or as a replacement for the distribution of UTC. And please note that I'm talking about the distribution and not the definition. So I'd like to raise the attention of ITUR and other delegates because most of the member states haven't issued their opinions. So we hope that uh, this issue can be further studied at the uh, working group level and uh, consensus needs to be reached at the working group level. We are not really in a position at the present I mean, point to, to support uh, uh, immediate decision on this matter. Uh, and we think uh, it is something that we need to look at. And it is our commitment that we continue to participate more in the activities of uh, study group seven so that we have uh, clarity in the risks that have, I mean, if any, that have been identified. And how does it affect us as, as, as a people? And what benefits we can drive, immediate benefits we can drive by making that adjustment. But we're not really, what is working, we think, should continue to work. We don't have a specific decision today. In my view, a specific decision, a concrete decision by the Assembly should be to recommend to study group seven that it continues the studies and endeavor to take into account all those very interesting arguments and proposals which have been heard during the discussion. I would analyze the arguments and speakers that we have heard into three categories. There is almost an even balance between all three categories. First of all, there is the, the category of those administrations who are in favour of the draft revision of the recommendation. An almost equal number of administrations are opposed to the draft revision. Some at this saying at this point in time, others on a perhaps longer time basis. But nevertheless, they would vote against 
approving the draft revision of the recommendation at this time. But there is a third group of countries, and those are the ones I would like to give some attention to, who are saying that they are in a position where because they have not been able to participate in the very highly technical nature of the work which is conducted in study group seven, and in particular in working party 7A, on what is a very complex technical issue, that they feel they are somewhat disadvantaged in not being fully informed on the consequences or the implications of the draft revision. They are neither saying they favour it, nor do they oppose it. Rather that they would like the opportunity to gain more un information and a better understanding of the issues. I believe that the appropriate course of action, which I would now like to propose, is that we return this draft revision of recommendation 460 to study group 7 for further work leading to the development of a continuous standard, taking into account all technical options that may be available and that can be evaluated in addition to the work that has already been concluded by Working Party 7A.